three of my aunts, the, the Spencer aunts, aunties, they are very, uh, they are very strict, right? they are very worried. You shouldn't go there, you shouldn't do this. What best will happen to you? And I become very unhappy. Yangon is very crowded, very noisy. And Yangon people are really show off. <laughs> they like to show off. And that, that is that is the main reason I think I become a monk. <laughs> and yeah. And because, I, because of the like uh, the life in your room. Yeah. One reason, that's one reason. Because and I was so unhappy and I I was a I I become a Buddhist since I was born. Because my parents were Buddhist. And I didn't understand Buddhism. I was complaining. I'm trying to stay good way, but why I'm so unfortunate and I'm complaining like uh, one of my friends, he is doing very bad. And why he is, everything is fine for him. I was complaining a lot. And so, and after I finished my high school, like, we have New Year in every year. April is our New Year. That time, we, people like, young people like to run the town by the cars. Enjoying water festival. Uh, I was enjoying in the previous years, but I couldn't feel the happiness, lasting long happiness. I saw people are so crazy to get happiness, get they have to get drunk and so dangerous, and you need to spend lots of money. And after that water festival finish. You get skin burn and all the com- becomes darker. That's and one year we were running the town by the car, and we already stopped somewhere. And someone come come to us at that time, long time ago. We have like people splash the water with balloons. You know the balloons. You put water inside and they throw with this, this balloons. That's, sometimes it's come with, strike with force and it's very painful one. In that time, our car is already stopped and one of a very strong man, is very strong man, he hold a balloon and come and strike like a, really like an enemy. And it's really strike through into my ear. The water was with force. And oh, I was like, my ear got problem for about three, four months. Very uncomfortable, very painful. And, and I was really fed up with this water festival. And next year, the water festival is there. And everywhere the shops are closed and we cannot travel somewhere. It's the whole country is like stopping. We cannot go anywhere. So I don't want to enjoy that water festival again in that year. So I was thinking what to do. I was so unhappy. And uh, what is meditation? In, in our Generations like my, our parents, our grandparents, our relatives never had meditation experiences like, in their life. But I myself wanted to test. Idea come. People said meditations make give happiness. I want to test. Then I was thinking how to do that. Coincidentally, one of uh, our my uncle. He is a, a like department head from a, a, a government office. Then his staff, the this department staff, they will temporarily ordain in a in a meditation center. Nearly all are the drunkards. 
the drunkards, about 15%, mostly the drunkards, and they, they will temporarily ordain us the monk. And then I was thinking, oh, whether I must change my life as a monk temporarily ordain. So I asked to my uncle, can I join with that group? And he said, why not? But they are going to ordain in a meditation center. You have to meditate. Oh yeah, I want to meditate. That's why I, I changed. Okay, then join. And it was my first time meditation experience in Tamwe. In Shui Men World, Shui Men World, the Sasana Center. That's Mahasi Way. And it was, it was very funny. You know, the, the drunkards, they are, they are testing many ways because it's very sleepy. And they, they bang their forehead with the, the ground or they, uh, it's happened. So they are testing many ways and they are, they are guiding me. Okay, when you meditate, you must, you must put your hand <laughs> over this and it will not happen. <laughs> and, and like, you must hold your knees to not to uh, fall back. <laughs> Many ways. It was very painful. It was very sleepy. Uh, the teachers are not, mostly not inside the meditation hall. We have to meditate ourselves. Long hours. Uh, many sections. So very painful. But some of the sections, some monks come and give the my talk, I listen. Oh yeah, <coughs> this thing is right, true, it's really true. Uh, Anecca, Dokka, Anatta, I'm hearing this, oh yes, that's true. And since then, I, I have had I, oh, yeah. Although I cannot do it very well yet, I have to do it, I will do it. That idea I start attaching in my mind. And it was 10 days, then I come out. Then next year, water festival again. I don't want to enjoy water festival. Go again, search for uh, meditation centers, join again, and every year becomes my, my meditation time. And I start searching like, which center I will be able to stay nicely, which center I'll be able to eat nicely, <laughs> like this kind of thing. Um, yeah, like going Gaji centers, I've been many times. The food's very nice, it's very quiet. You don't need to do anything, just meditate, meditate, meditate. But I notice myself, after I come back to my home, I like to complain more. Because my room, my home is just beside the main road, uh, the bus, bus stop, just beside the bus stop, the main road, it's very noisy, like Yangon roads, you know, very noisy one. And when I come back, I'm complaining the noise. So the home is still the same, it's like, before I'm going to meditation center, it, it was noisy. After I come back from meditation center, it's still noisy. And it is not changing. I am the one who, who is changing. <laughs> so it is not... I'm not becoming like stronger in the ma. I'm weaker in the ma. <laughs> it's going on the same. And I like to complain more on the people. Why are you staying like this? Why are you staying like this? in my mind becomes more talkative. That's not that's not the true Dhamma. So joining, joining, joining many times and then like that kind of quiet the minds like to attach on that kind of quietness. Quietness uh, like and when you, when you are not getting that quietness, the mind is in trouble. So I am knowing I'm needing, I'm needing something, missing, I'm missing something. Uh, and after a long time joining many retreats, 
I was born more about the same ways. And I'm knowing I'm needing something, I'm missing something. So uh, then I, I'm dead. I was getting in Singapore. I was there for 10 years, but I'm always coming back to Myanmar for to to meditate. I got every yearly holiday, and I'm coming back for meditation. In that year, 2008, I was thinking, I don't want to try anymore the centers I've been. I want, I'm needing something, and I heard about this Tabawa Center. Then I joined the Bawa Center. And since I heard about the Bawa Center, I am knowing in my mind, I'm knowing this is the place I'm searching for. This will be the place. Because I already had idea when I become old, I will stay in a meditation center only. I will end my life in a meditation center only. I was searching. And I, I found. But the Bawa center is totally different with the centers I, I've been before. It's so crowded, so noisy, so many jobs to do, volunteering, a lot. And you have to apply your meditations and its volunteering. So like your meditation time is like you are learning a theory and volunteering time, applying your calmness is practical. It's like at the same place you can learn theoretical and practical. That's But I was not satisfied with my improvements when I was in Tallinn. I stayed in Tallinn before. I started to get to Tallinn in 2012, April, New Year, New Year time. And then I permanently stayed there. And 2013, December, I become a monk. And 2014, like February, I start, start getting to this Shui Chong Tabawa Center. So after getting here only, I get fulfillment. Yeah, life becomes like very meaningful. When I was in Tanin Center, like I had to follow Seado's ways and I try to follow like people teach uh, you must do limitless good deeds oh, limitless good deeds I try but I was not happy I was not happy uh, so giving too much for others and I have not much time to meditate for myself. That time, it was totally different with now. Now there are many volunteers people. <coughs> that time, very, very little volunteer people. <coughs> you were very busy. And after a long time, you were fed up with that. So, uh, thinking for others too much is awesome. It's also not the good way, not the right way. <coughs> Thinking for self only. <coughs> Some people, they, they are not interesting about meditate, uh, uh, volunteering. They just want to stay quiet, meditate. They want, to, they want to choose the quiet place. They want to stay alone, meditate, meditate, meditate. And however that person meditate, I will tell you, there will be no, no, uh, how do you call it, sufficient improvements in that person. Because it's not applying to the life, <coughs> actual <coughs> life. So you need to apply. So what did you do? 
таких будет длиться, но когда мы слышим, учим. I can drive, so my main job was driving most of the times, and I can carry the things, so carrying things, many things. Arms. Yeah, arms. Every morning, like arms, arms, cars, the truck I drove. Every morning. That time, there was only two groups of arms, arms, two groups of monks. Now it's 23 groups, I think. Uh, that time the center was very poor, very very poor. Uh, we have to depend on Seattle only, like people donate to Seattle and we share. So now uh, the donations money is in his hand, and then it's gone. Many things to spend. So the Armstrong cars. No money to fill up the diesel. Right. Daily job. Mm. So we we use our own money and many things. And, and we got a call like we want to donate the rice bags at where can you can you send a car to that place? And we try to find something <coughs> carry that we cannot find. So I drove alone. Reaching there, I carry myself. Uh, then, then the mind start complaining. Like, oh, there are so many people in the center, and when we need to do something, we cannot find people. They just eat, they just sleep. And uh, you are doing physically good jobs, but mentally you angry. So the the physical good actions and mental bad actions is opposite. Is so you cannot say like I'm doing good deeds and good karma out there. No, it, it, it will not. Because it's not wholeheartedly to do it. You are unable to do it wholeheartedly. That's very, very important to do the good deeds wholeheartedly. Enjoy me doing it. And that's not easy. How do you do it? That time I was how, angry. How, how do you change your mindset that you wholeheartedly volunteer? After getting to this center only, uh, now I'm wholeheartedly doing. Now my main job is teaching. I'm wholeheartedly teaching. You just need to find the activity you like doing. No. This is the good action. This is the actions I should do. This is the actions I'm able to do. So I'm doing. And uh, not only like teaching is my main main job. I am leading this center, uh, in charging this center. You're the abbot. Actually, yeah, you can say it. I I am the like in charge. So many responsibilities are there, but I am wholeheartedly taking these responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. I cannot do all. I cannot solve all the all the problems, but I'm trying to solve solving wholeheartedly. I'm not. I'm not sad. I'm not disappointed. But if you are doing something good, like as you say, you were buying the rice and driving, and your mind starts complaining about about the people who are not doing anything, should you sh- should continue, right, and try to yeah, overcome yeah. your complaint? Yeah. So you need to meditate all the time, volunteering, and never meditate, and then this anger will rise, rise up. So like yeah, meditation is like <coughs> like extinguishing the fire. And volunteering the fires, rise and then extinguishing the fires, and that kind of balance. So even if you if you uh, if you are sacrificing for family members, like let's say you are not in a meditation center in a, uh, a community, you are in your home. 
And if you sacrifice for your par- your children or your family members all the time, after a long time later, you, you cannot be happy. Because I was going to teach in Dalla. Dalla is just next to Yango. The river is there, the other side of Yango. Uh, so in that, that Dalla, uh, there's a monastery. It's not the, the Bawa Center, a monastery. And there's a big Dhamma hall donated by a young man. So I, I went there already two times. The first time, the donor couldn't join the retreat because he is so busy with his business, a successful business. He has the biggest construction material shops uh, and the second time when I go there he is joining that retreat temporarily ordained as a monk and joining the retreat because uh, he got he got stroke paralyzed before that retreat start he got stroke so he cannot walk and then he joined and he listened to our Dhamma talks, meditates and then he shared about his life. Uh, he was, they were born in a poor family in, in a small village uh, and they have many siblings and the parents like to be like united. The, the family should not split, so must stay together, that kind of idea. The father has that kind of idea. So this, they are very close to each other, the family members. And he, in, in their village, the, it is very nat- natural. Like uh, When they finish their primary school, they have to quit from the school and they have to walk the family's jobs. That's their style. But for him, he really wants to be educated person. So he begged to his father, Father, let me study, continue, let me continue, let me finish my study. So the father sent him to Yango with to so he had to stay together with his relative people. And they really looked down on him. Uh, like he he had he had to walk like many things and they, they looked look down to him so he was staying in one home one home one home and he has that mind I need to be rich I need to be rich that mind I, I need to be educated person I need to be rich with that kind of mind he's living and then he becomes uh, graduated and then he's going back to his village and he asks to the father, Father, please, let's move to the town. Let's do the business. And the father don't want that. But the mother got, the, I think, TB. TB, so she need regular treatments at the clinic and hospital. At their village, there is no clinic. So uh, because of mother, they moved to the, the La. The La is next to Yango, just beside the river and they buy a big land. Then he start selling the firewoods and the bamboos and the, the charcoal or what? The ban charcoal. Charcoal. That small shops. He start he started that. Then he tried very hard. And when some people come and ask him like what? Uh, is this item available or not? And next day he try to sell this item at his shops, and it's bigger and bigger, and then becomes a construction material shops. He walk very hard from from morning till night, and they become becomes the biggest shops in the lab, and. Then he was so happy, he was so close to his parents, so he never spent money. 
every day he spend 2,000 jats only. And whatever profits he will give to the parents. And the parents, the father said, Oh, my son, we already saved this amount. And he's so happy with this. But he was so busy. And uh, then uh, they, they can even donate that big Dhamma hall. Uh, that's, and they built their building, their home four-story building, the very grand one for the family members to be able to stay. Then the, all of his brothers, sisters becomes married, all married. Uh, and they marry with like someone like, uh, like uh, how do you call it? Not the good people, they, they marry with these kind of people. And the father don't want to split up the family, so they asked all to come and stay in that building. So he said, I, the strangers come in and they are staying in one room, one room, one room, like four stories, very grand building. But for him, he he is still selling the firewoods, the, the charcoal, the bamboo, There's still that shop is still there. And the la, there are many thieves. The thief likes to steal the things at night time, so he cannot. Uh, he, he so to protect it, he is still sleeping in that bamboo shop, just beside the roadside, a small one. And at the night time, he said he was sleeping in the bamboo cart, and he was looking at that four-story grand building. Oh no! The strangers come in and they are staying nicely. And for me, I'm still <laughs> sleeping at the roadside. And he, sleep, he saw like the brother-in-law, sisters-in-law, they are not sleeping uh, until very late. They are uh, doing this with the phones, Facebook, and they are doing that. And he was very unhappy and his business is very successful, so so many customers coming. Sometimes the sellers are not enough, so he called to his sisters, brothers, brothers-in-law, and they are still sleeping. And he said, uh, come and help us, we have not enough people. And the answer with sleepy way, okay, okay, we come and not come. He's very unsatisfied with this already. He has lots of money, he wanted to be rich. He becomes rich, but he's not happy. And he said, uh, like sometimes he, everybody is still sleeping, he wake up so early in the morning, he prepare the breakfast for these people. Yes. Uh, then very stressed. And then the second time when I go, before I was going, he got stroke. Uh, one hand cannot move. So no choice, he has to, he's joining the retreat. And he know, he has one time experience of joining retreat in Goingaji centers. And he know, he know the value of meditation. He must do it, he know. But no time, no time. Sacrifice a lot. So, yeah, if you look at his life, he's out of balance. He's thinking too much for others, and he's not thinking for self. He's unbalanced, and you cannot get happiness. So, some of the people are like that. They think too much for others, and they never think for themselves. Uh, Did his family members work? Yeah. <coughs> uh, yeah. And and he said, so he was very worried. Like if I'm not there, it will not run well. Uh, the the younger brothers sisters are not qualified. He's worried. But now he is sick and he's joining the retreat. No choice, they have to fill in. They have to fill in and it's still running. 
And the father, actually it's because of father's uh, encouragement. He, he see his son is very in stress. And very reliable son is in stress. So the father really wants his son to join his retreat. And he join and then, oh, now I know what I am missing. So actually in, in the samsara, we already had that kind of experience. Like sacrifice for, for children, <coughs> family members, friends, <coughs> societies, many times already. Like in the dog's life, you might see the mother dog, she will be very busy searching for the babies. So our living way should be in balance. Uh, some people, yeah, they are not like that. They are thinking for themselves only. Thinking for themselves does not mean like they are very, very egoistic, very selfish. Uh, like for them to be able to stay nicely, not like that. They want to be enlightened for all defilements to clear, and they meditate, 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 and they are not, they are not even like washing the dishes or uh, like. Somebody has to be prepare the food for that person and uh, for that person to shower, the water must ready, everything must ready, someone must suffer all the time. But after a long time later, even like the father is all the time meditating at home, mostly at the uh, front room in, in front of Buddha image, all the time meditating and the par- the children prepare the food for father when the time to shower the water must ready maybe after a long time later even the children cannot cannot be happy with the father happy with the mother because it is not the correct way it is not the sama kamanda sama means right Correct. Kamanda means action, not right action. And how can you say meditation is not the right action? <laughs> yes, if you are meditating like this only, that's not the right action. So Buddha's way is that noble eightfold path. This is the real meditation, real, real, um, correct way. And what I found about Tanlin, why I, why I didn't get satisfactions from Tanlin, and I found Tanlin is a little bit out of balance. Not a little bit, a lot out of balance. You have no chance to meditate nicely. Like the volunteering, noise, and the drunkards, the dogs, not settled yet, this field is not settled yet, they want to extend another field and not settle and extend another one and not settle. (coughs) I was thinking, I was judging, I was thinking that Sama Sama Sankapa, right thinking, right judging, you must have. What to do? And I wanted to change many systems in Tanya and I judge whether it's possible or not. It's not possible. It's beyond my ability. So, okay, I will not try to change in Tanya, the systems in Tanya. That's why I'm reaching here. I'm trying my best to change the systems. I'm not exactly following the Tanya's way. 
we will accept the people here, but we will check. Uh, some people are very high device, and we, if we need to kick out these kind of people, I'm not, I will not hesitate to kick out the people. Because if we really like filling up that person's desires, maybe that person will get benefits. But many people will have disadvantage. unable to solve this, unable to accept your unable this, then only you will be able to do the job you are able to do with full energy.
when I'm back in Thailand, what I can do is like teaching. Teaching. Uh, so if I'm invited, I'll teach. That's what I can do. And I, I'll just do what I do the best way, wholeheartedly, that's all. Uh, I have a question. What is the job that you do? from the monk in Kala, except in arms, because I, I saw it, but I didn't see. Okay, so when I was in Nanang, like, like I told you, I drove the arms from Skala every day. Uh, it was Yangon group. There was only two groups, Yangon group and Taketa group. So I drove Yangon group's car. And I know very well that the food was not enough at all. When we get back to Thailand, we share it's not enough. Uh, and the money was not enough, the water was not enough, nothing was enough. And then I was very fed up, I could not do many things then. Then I changed my life as a monk in 2013 December. Then after I become a monk, I was thinking, like, what? what I can do for the center. Then I, I got an idea. Okay, I will organize a new group of arms by myself. And I just become a monk. And, okay, where to go? Okay, I will go near to my home. Because at least people will know me, at least my face, and maybe at least I will get some donations and I will share back this. But you need many things. You need to organize the monks, you need to organize the people, volunteer people, you need a car. Uh, when I become a monk, the whole center, we have total about five or six cars, maybe, maybe like seven cars. Only that these cars are non-stop running, never enough. So for the new group, we need the new car. And we need to buy that. I don't have money. And it's impossible to ask from Seattle. So I decided, okay, I will borrow the money from my friends, from my parents, my, my brother, my sisters. I borrow, I take responsibilities that I bought a truck. And uh, I organized, try to pursue the monks and the volunteer people. And I wrote about the Tapawa Center. I, we care for old people, sick people as well. So the food you donate are not only for the monks. We share it to these kind of people as well, like that kind of uh, flats. Then we share, we talk to the newspaper men. And the newspaper men put this pamphlet in the newspaper and he said, so they know that like, on Monday we are coming to this street. At what time and what time? Tuesday this street, like that. So they know. So the first day when we go, I walk in the front, just very junior monk. And all the senior monks are following behind me. It was very difficult. Monks are very difficult <laughs> to control. But it was, it was surprising, like, people are lining up on the street to donate us, so many donors, and I was, I was trying myself not to cry, it's really affected my mind, not to cry, oh, so many donations we got, and then I was so happy, we, we share back these things to the center, and then I did, yeah, of course, I had to struggle a lot of difficulties, like in Armstrong's to get five months, it was very difficult, sometimes four months only, uh, some months are sick, because daily job, this is the daily job, every day when heavily rainy, you need to go out, the sun is so hot, you need to go out, you have to, so after you start, you cannot stop, because people are waiting to eat. Uh, I did it, and that group is still going on, and yeah, because of that. Did you pay back the money? Hmm? 
your parents, friends, family? Yeah, of course, of, of course, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, it takes a long time before you gather enough money in the pool and yeah, to pay yeah. off the truck because yeah. the truck is expensive. Yeah, it was difficult. It was very difficult. We had to struggle a lot, take many responsibilities. It's not because, it's not for yourself and to share the center. And you must have confidence with yourself. Your mind should not be shake the world. Yeah, some people say good about me, some people say bad about me. Okay, let it be. This is my meditation's object. Just do your job. And because of that, I am able to do this. Because of Tang Lin's experience, I am able to leave this center. Cool. Yeah. I think so um, to do good deeds is means that doing something that it, it's not easy for you sometimes. I mean if you just do the thing that you like or that are easy for you, it's not a good deed. Just do something that you don't waste for anything better. Just do something with helping your, your intention is to help the others for the others to be good uh, with that kind of intention you are doing yeah. and I, I am a kind of person I don't want to follow uh, the teachers like, you must do like this <coughs> if I don't see uh, this is this is not okay for me. I don't want to follow that. I want to follow my idea myself. I want to do this good deeds. I want to do this good deeds. And not because of someone's pressure. By myself. Then only I will be able to do it wholeheartedly, happily. Every month you teach one day? Sorry? Every month one day should uh, teach? No, it depends on the monks. Some monks are not teaching. So, uh, why we change our life as a monk? Because we want to stay in a very simple way. Not, not taking too much res- response. No need to take too much responsibilities. Normal monks, you should not be like hanging around with people all the time, talking blah 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 all the time. You must, you must peacefully stay. But some people are not thinking to share back their practice to people. Some has willingness to share, share back Buddha's teachings, uh, spreading sasana. That's so. I I have that mind. I don't want to practice for myself only. I want to share it. I like to discuss. I like to share uh, in my lay person's life. <coughs> I like to share these tamas, especially when I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When I'm drunk, I, I like to share this tama. <laughs> Think about monks in Dabawa, it's sort of special, and I remember Sayadaw replied to sort of this question of what the monks are doing in Dabawa, and basically the start of the answer is, you must understand that we are all patients here in Dabawa. Patients. Patients, yeah, and we accept everyone. So you get all different kinds of monks, and some of them are in Dabawa because they are not wanted in any other monastery. It's yeah. just for them, it's refuge. Yeah. So you can see monks that are really, you can think what they are doing here, they are patients, yeah. right? No, but I, and, and I don't mean physically in the hospital, but My sort friend. of men, mentally. Right? Because they have their ways. 
And, and then there are other monks who are very yeah, secluded and just meditate somewhere. And then there are monks like Bhante Nevada who like to share and like to help. There's Sarah Kema, Sarah Rita. So it's, it's not simple to define what's there is no role model monk in the power. And <laughs> what I am like, I am like such kind of person who like to judge, think. So, what is the weak point of the Bawa darling? Is is like this created truth and original truth and created truth. So, original truth. There is no I, no you, no something, no someone, monk, man, woman, what's the difference? No difference, the same. Just physical process, mental process. But there is created truth. Monks are monks. The rules are there. Man has to follow man's rules. Woman has to follow woman's rules. So should not break this created truth as well. And in the Bawa, this part is lacking. And they are really emphasizing on, yeah, there's no I, no you. So, like, if someone is bad, uh, just follow his desire. And if you fulfill someone's desire, your, spe- your desire will fulfill. I don't want to agree that. If that, that desire is uh, because of defilements, you will be endless, you have to be endlessly filled up, it will never end. So, the rules are there. Can you explain how you become a monk? What, how to become what, a monk? What is the First you need to be shamed. <laughs> okay. You need somebody to donate your robe. Somebody needs to donate your robe, set of robes. And a mole. Mm-hmm. Then you become an artist, you get a name, and you have uh, Isa and two temporary names Naga and Isa, right? Mm-hmm. Te- teta. Te- tesa. Tesa. Tesa and Naga. Tesa is the teacher's name. Yeah, Naga so is there, is a, there is a text. So even though you have an individual name, they don't want to change the text all the time. So there is like a the, the, the text they use the name Naga and Tisa, mm-hmm. and they repeat the text, and then you become a novice. You, to, you put on, they help you to put on the robes. No, to become a novice, no need to read that the Naga Tisa is in Mankush, yeah. Mank oh, traditions only. To become a, a novice, you must keep ten precepts. Ten precepts. It takes like yeah. ten minutes, not even. But you need a monk who has more than five passes or ten passes. Ten passes. Ten. So a monk who has at least ten years of monk experience can obey you. As a novice. So you need ten, ten years to, to be a monk. Yeah, so if we are monks mm-hmm. for ten years, then we can obey a new monk. No, a novice. A novice. For, for novice, you need only one monk. Or yeah, in one, 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 you one, 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 don't want to make the effort. Otherwise, it would uh, die out. Maybe. Can you do that? I just read the Mahavaga now, so I have it still in my memory. In the beginning, it was well. In the total beginning, it, there was no such a thing. But then it, it was set up. You had to have ten monk, ten seniors monk, or a, a, a new monk. After he got through the very period as a novice, and then he was in the center of the dispensation, and then someone from the like from far away, not where, where there was 
less monks, just send a message back to Buddha that it is not easy for him to find ten monks who ordain a new monk. So Buddha made this exception that if you are on the outskirts and there is not enough monks, you can ordain it with five senior monks. But it was just exception for the places where there, there, there was not no big sangha. It was not like less like with some rules, like sleeping with, with lay people, it was laid out yeah, but generally anywhere. But with some rules, like wearing shoes and ordaining with just five senior monks and taking shower more often than once in two weeks. <laughs> there was exceptions made out of the Genji's folly for for the far regions where the sun was not so strong or things were difficult. Mm-hmm. Well, these rules were, were changing. Like, when Boda was alive, at the beginning to become a monk, if someone say he wants to become a monk, uh, Boda called just just say Buddha said something. Ehi boku, ehi boku. Then it's it's the ordination that finish. Yeah. Okay. Just says two words. Yeah, That's come on the monk, the monk. Come, come on the monk. And that that person becomes a monk. That's enough. And then then the, then like uh, he he's getting disciples. Buddha got the monks. The book the monks. Uh, the the society is bigger, then the, the monks want to ordain them. And later on, Bodham, Saranam, Gachami, Dhamman, Saranam, Gachami, Sangha. That's the ordination. Mm-hmm. Only that. And then, <coughs> later on, like, then this kind of ordination. Why do they make it more difficult? Mm, because of the situations, like, uh, in this kind of ceremony, like we must have uh, a new sasana teacher, a new sasana sangha. It's like an MC of the ordination, the ceremony, and the uh, uh, upis, upis, uh, MC is main character. No, the, the like the secretary, uh, the the like. The ceremonies, the ceremonies uh-huh. made person like, mm-hmm. yeah, a new sasana teacher, and then like the upese teacher is the new monk teacher. He will teach the rules, how to stay, how to behave, how to not not to do. He, he is the one. There must be the upese seya, a new sasana seya. And the Kamawa Shia. Kamawa means that, that reading this. So, yeah. And the, the tones, the pronunciation should be correct. If, if it is not three, so one time reading three, three months. So if all three months were wrong pronunciation, it's not, it's not, um, <coughs> Yeah, it's not the real ordination. Yeah, not the real ordination. And uh, but one one is reading wrong pronunciation, but the other two are still doing uh, the correct pronunciation. It's still okay. But among these three, if one is one has that parajika, yeah, and that is not that one is not becoming a monk. You don't know who, who already broke that. This is you cannot see on their face. So normally, like not only one time, two times, or three times, another three months read again, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like that. That's that why. Nice. That's why uh, in the ordination ceremony, and and plus, kupeja uh, seya. This ah, uh, this is kamawa seya. This this paper is called kamawa. So the readers plus karaka sangha. Karaka is like the extra one. So approve, 
approval of this person's to become a monk. Uh, that reading is like uh, that Naga, uh, the the Tesa is the teacher of him, and like that reading uh, with with many force, many many monks wrong him and approve him. Yeah, the moon be like a circle around, the, almost like a whole circle around the new moon. And the, the tone when you they read, it's like power. Maybe. Uh, but, but before you get that, uh, uh, you need to answer these ten questions. Yeah. Are you a man? Yeah. Only, only that, only that person uh, is qualified. Qualified to become a monk. Yeah. It's matching with these qualifications, <coughs> then. Yeah. I was noticed for five minutes. <laughs> five minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Or ten minutes maybe. <laughs> okay. So uh, in Sri Lanka they like to do two years. In the past was also like some time. But Sayedo Tomasara he looked me in the eye when you read my mind, I don't know. He said, You can become a I said, okay. <laughs> to become a nun is the same? I don't know. Become a nun is so easy. <laughs> if you want to become a nun, you can become a nun now. But it's the same now? But don't you need a nun's robe? No, no, we, we need a ceremony. But it's very easy. I don't know. Why the rules are different? I don't know. Why are the nuns different? Yes, because the bikus and the bikunis are similar. But the bikunis are not the nuns. The nuns are more like the novices. So to become a monk, you need to be a novice first. To become bikuni, you need to be a nun first. But now bikuni has died out officially. So now the nun is kind of the only thing that exists. So why are bikunis accepted as so there are some some nuns known as bikunis and they're accepted as bikunis? Because so nobody really will ordain bikunis. Well, obviously they will somewhere for them to become. Jan Brown started the new movement. No, I've heard them from other countries as well. Jan Brown. Sri Lanka. No. Sri Lanka. No. Sri Lanka. No. Sri Lanka. No. Um, so I've met some Vietnamese, Korean, Chinese. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
to have something. In some monasteries, it's sort of having slaves for, for the monks, so someone can take care of the monks, but so they have the silence. Sometimes there are monasteries where the silence sort of live the arms mendicant's life, meditate, go for arms and everything. But the main thing to understand is that there are the gurus that are not accepted and sort of according to the tradition in Burma and Thailand, in Sri Lanka, Theravada, they are basically there are no gurus because they really died out and don't have in, in the Middle Ages, mm-hmm. you don't have Buddha, so without Buddha you cannot start a Bikuni order. So to have something for for women, there is this here is Hyalase in, in Thailand, they call them match matches. In Western Ajahn Chah's tradition they they made this new thing, how they call it. Uh, Siladaras and they wear brown robes, they look like the goodies actually because it's on the west they basically are like they can live the life. It's just formally officially. They are non not not the goodies. And then it's depends on how how they treat them and how they live their life. If you take the monks in Tabawa, how they take officially maybe monks, but if you see how they all in their lives, some like people with sort of more proper monks like even without rows, you have to just make your mind how you feel about it. Why did they die now? They, they died out because for, to, to make a new bikuni, the same for action have, have more requirements. To make a new bikuni, you have to become a novice, not none, but sort of novice. Be, if I remember, it, two years, right? With your preceptor to train with the nun. Mm-hmm. After the two years, if you don't break anything, you will they consider you properly trained, you again have to, and for Bikunis it's twofold ordination, the first half, the questioning, is done with nuns, so you have to have nuns, and then after this questioning, the nuns should go to, to, to monks and say this, Adept, it's, she's proper, we question her, she's trained, please make her Bikuni, and the monks make her Bikuni. Mm-hmm. So if all the nuns died out. They died out because anything, epidemic or banished, killed. You have no nuns to train a new nun to make her bikuni and no one to order in her. And basically what they did with the revival in, in Taiwan and in Sri Lanka is they they took Mahayana uh, nuns from Taiwan because the lineage sort of goes back to the Buddha. The problem is that they observe different denial, different rules. They are yeah, they, they just live really different. They don't live according to the rules that Buddha set for the Kunis. But like historically it goes to Buddha. It's just they take these train the new Theravada Bikunis on these ones, ordain them with them and with Theravada monks, and, and then set it's proper because you have these rules about reconciling divided community. You have even rules for if monk or non community divides about some legal question about the rules, then there is schism, there is split of the communities. And we have rule how to put this together. And probably the idea was like we split and we get together after a few years. And they use this thing to call the new Bikunis Theravada Bikunis. 
they, they split the, the Mahayana Bhikkhuni the split like a new new sort of tradition so now they make the Bhikkhunis that are sort of Mahayana and they said okay we are accepting the Theravada rules so we, we are joining magic back to the tradition so now it's one tradition and we go to Theravada Bhikkhunis <laughs> that's, that's what happened with the Ministry of Religion, those monks, they didn't agree to in Myanmar. Yeah, in Myanmar it's not accepted, in Thailand it's not accepted, in Shri, even in Sri Lanka mostly it's not accepted, but it depends. For example, I was in Ajahn Anand's monastery in Thailand, he's one of the Ajahn Chah's disciples, Araha, and this uh, German Bikuni ordered on uh, on Thai, Taiwan came. She got maybe 20, 30 wasa as a, as a Theravada Bikuni ordered on Thai. She, she came and he normally welcomed her and he gave her a cookie and she stayed there for a week asking if she can stay longer and he said, Better for you to try on West because in Thai, Thailand people are not prepared for it. She does that, he, he doesn't say this is not proper, go out of my master. Mm-hmm. He accepted her. And when people were asking, this is basically the same that Sarah Uttama Sarah would tell you there is, in, in the ultimate reality, there is no woman, no man, no, no monks, no nuns. It doesn't matter. And that, that was sort of this answer for, for this problem. No, but yeah, if, if you go to rural, rural, like somewhere out of the big cities, the people can be quite attached to the to their image how the, how it should be practiced. The Buddhism, the thing that you call Buddhism, think about Buddhism. And for them, this is blasphemy. This is sort of like a sin that they can, can get even violent about this. Right? So, it's, it's culture, yeah. It's, it's Buddhism, like, I like to think that uh, one, one guy said, are, are you a Buddhist? I'm following the example of Gautama Buddha. That's the that Buddhist said. That I really can resonate with myself. Because Buddhism becomes some cultural thing, right? You, you get the tradition, you get the teaching, and sometimes it's not alive. For well, not how many questions are respected? 227. 27. But according to Venerable Solomon, over 90 billion. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. those 227 are just headlines, you know? Mm-hmm. Like if you make a scripture um, for your school, you have headlines about chapters. Those rules are just chapters. Inside those rules, there's different factors, different. You know, you can have sex with a woman, but also with a dead woman, also with a monkey, also with, you know, a deva, or, you know, you can do anything. So, everything combined makes a very nice building. Mm-hmm. How many
And uh, if someone is offering the food to you, if it's not the proper way, you should not eat, but some people don't know how to properly offer uh, unknowingly. Yeah, they sometimes look. Yeah, you have the bowl with the soup, and the whole table is offered, okay, but then the, the soup is almost empty, and they give us more soup. But then they don't offer it again, and we just take it. So actually, we're all great for because these are the small rules. We should touch it while someone is pouring in the soup. So those are inside the 200%? That is inside the 200%. I just, you know, thought about it. And the toilet one? Those are common errors. Before you enter the toilet, so you're not sure it, it is closed or, you know, you need to open it or not, you know? Yes. And you're sure that <laughs> something like that. And you can only lift the under rope if you're actually above the toilet. Not one step before. <laughs> Things like that. Is the, the showering only allowed the under room? Is that plus the kind of thing? Yeah, like when I shower personally, I just take off everything that's easy to shower. But apparently, you have to always wear one piece of rope at least. So if you shower underneath, you need to have the upper rope. If you shower the upper, the upper part, you need the under rope. Or you yeah. <laughs> really just <laughs> how, how do you get peace of mind? <laughs> how long do you sleep at night? Buddha is not blindly make the rules, he's not blindly strict the rules. He likes to change the rules according to the times updating, amending the rules. So if Bodha is still alive, he will, he will try to do the rules according to the times. So, but we shouldn't break the rules. It's not matching with this time. I don't need to tell No, there are intentions why he made these rules. So we shouldn't break the intentions. If we don't care, oh, it's not matching anymore. We are not the lay person here, the monk. Not to forget this. Yeah. What Venerable Salomon told me is that if you break your rule intentionally, you cannot become enlightened. You can practice as hard as you want, but since, you know, if you break your rule intentionally, it is like you're disrespecting the Buddha, and because you disrespect the Buddha, you have no chance until you confess and you, you know. But if you are, uh, if you are not not getting that enlightenment wisdom, the fast wisdom yet, like, you are still a putu jana person, normal person. Crazy person. Crazy person. <laughs> so, like, Loba, Dosa, Moha, is still able to attach in your minds. So, Loba is still attaching in your minds, and then you know, this way is not a good way to live. This way, I should stay in this way, I should not stay in this way. But the craving, I want to stay still stay in this way and you cannot break stop that because the loba is still there and moha is you are forgetting like should stay this way should not stay this way but forgetfully automatically you are already staying this way so no putu jana is is perfectly will be perfectly able to follow the rules yeah that's why that's why confession is there that's why I like, should not say, I never break the rules, I have no need to confess. No, there are so many rules. Unknowingly or knowingly, we broke many rules. Yeah, but if you confess without knowing what rule you broke, then for me it's meaningless. Because then you're just confessing without in the, having in the mind what did I break, you know? It's reminding you to take care of this, to follow the rules. It's, it's, it makes you remind, and you know, and uh, so, and then in that saying, the meanings are there when we confess each other. Are you trying to see this as the mistakes? The somebody I see, right? Yeah. That's so. We must try to see. Uh, so to be a bit serious. Tomorrow morning, I'll come back. <laughs> So to whom do you confess? Also to the senior one. Okay. This, whoever monks. Whoever monks. Two monks. So one senior and one junior. You don't have to confess to a higher 
But you can only confess to a monk who's, you know, you committed an offense, and that other monk needs to be pure from that offense. So what did they do in Thailand? They're really smart. So we confess to a senior monk, so we are pure. Then the senior monk confesses to us, so he's pure. But maybe he was not pure in the offense we were confessing from. So then we committed an offense again because we purified ourselves against the monk that was not pure. So we do it again. So it's back, forth, and back. <laughs> so three times. <laughs> <laughs> and then there is Pati Moka every, every two weeks with full moon, empty moon. And then we have to, uh, all the monks should be pure. If a monk is not pure, then the Pati Moka is not valid. Can you write it? <laughs> And then what he was saying also, there's also during the ceremony to make new monks, they most of the times get extra monks, because if a monk is defeated, defeated means parajika, the highest offense they broke, something like they stole too much, something that was worth too much, or they had sex with a woman, or they <coughs> lying about their state, they say, oh, I'm not a but they're actually not an Arahant. And what Killing a human being. If you do that, but you never tell someone, so it is in secret, you're still defeated. So somewhere in the Kama, I guess, uh, if, if they make you a monk, but the defeated person was reading it, or was there, and there's not enough monks available, then your ordination is not valid. So that's why they get more monks than is actually required oftentimes. It doesn't really solve that simple life. <laughs> 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 Nothing about your sense. Yeah. Nothing is simple. It is simple in a way that having the rules set frees your mind from thinking, should I do this, should, should I not do it? Because you don't have to think about it. There is room for everything. There is rules for doing it. Right for us. <laughs> Any, anytime you want to follow a rule, you need to restrain yourself. So you can argue that they are somehow not temp- like contemporary anymore, but if you still follow them, you will have to restrain yourself. So somehow you still have to make the following again if they don't make any sense. But you can. But there are so many rules just to keep the lady happy, <laughs> to keep the faith up, you know? Like uh, monks have to wear the robes, otherwise there would be too much discomfort. Uh, or we cannot walk on trunk before dawn, otherwise we look like ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> there were many reasons for certain rules to come up. Some person or some so people in that time they were complaining because the monks were doing something they shouldn't be doing. Actually, there is this really rule that I also break a lot. Every time you sit on a chair without a sitting cloth, you should touch the chair to check if there's a baby there, so you don't kill the baby. What? There, apparently, one time a monk sat down on a bench and he killed the baby who was sitting on it. He was unmindful. So that's why we have to either use a sitting cloth or you have to touch it before you sit. Sitting cloth. Don't kick the baby. Yeah, it's only there's a cloth on it. If there's no cloth, enough. No, I think the monk was actually sitting, there was a pile of sitting on the bench, sitting on the bench, sitting on the bench, where a baby was in the I don't know. We have to hide a baby under the cloth and sit and don't see it. No, no, if the bench is brown and the baby has a brown cloth around the baby, then the baby is camouflage, you know? How is he also sitting on the bench? But how often do you talk to people and you're in a chair? Oh, you sit, you know? I think the sitting club is actually there, yeah, so we don't make the dirty one while you're sitting on it. It's not that we will get dirty. Yeah, there's a rich hour if we sit there. We can share funny rules. Do you know funny rules? I like the babies. I like the sections. There's a lot of ways in which you can't teach down to people. Uh, holding a stick, holding a weapon in a vehicle, things like that, unless they are 
<laughs> oh, there's also a really uh, a, a rule, a mold cannot uh, make a relationship between men and women. So if a monk says to, uh, you know, but it depends a little bit, because there is different kinds of offense. So if a monk says, oh, that guy would be really nice for you, and it is only, you know, you can confess. But if you say, oh, this guy is really nice for you, and that girl is really nice for you, so you say to two people, then it's a higher offense. If you say the same thing, but you also bring them together, yes, she lives there, he lives there, and they meet up, then it's a Sangali Sesa offense. A Sangali Sesa offense, which is almost the highest offense. You are excommunicated from the monastery, and every morning you have to go outside of the monastery for seven days plus the amount of days you get the offense as a secret. So if you don't tell anyone for half a year, you need to go half a year plus seven days outside of the monastery and, and make yes. some confession. But yeah. if you do with a man and with a woman, if you meet uh, If you bring people in a, into a relationship. Yes. So yeah. there was this monk and he was really, you know, open and he was attending <coughs> a marriage and he was really like, yeah, you should get married and help. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> this one one rule as well that says that you should not teach Vinaya to lay people. Hmm? Really? Yes. What? <laughs> 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 Where is that rule? Is it in a 2 to 7 or a training rule? It's in the training. But how yeah. should the lay people, I mean the lay people in a monastery, you also need to interact with the monks? No, no, no. Vinaya. Yeah, but they also need to know the rules of the monk. If no. they don't know that the monk needs to touch everything that he is he's going to eat, then how do they know that they have to offer it to him? They should offer it to him as it stands. Well, that's a good question, but the rule is still there. Yes. <laughs> There's also a rule in there about only a certain number of words of dharma to be taught to a woman and anyone else. Well, you should not teach a woman more than five sentences if there is not knowledgeable man present. So if you have knowledge, that's basically why most of the time, when, when there is, when you see at least in the Thai Forest Monastery, the monk went to teach the Dhamma class, and there is like, always the second monk sitting there just meditating next to him. And I was always wondering why it's there. He's just interested in the Dharma or no, he's there. So to make sure if the, all the audience happens to be women, so there is one who you have man with the man. And as well so he won't stay alone with the woman. So up to five sentences. Or I think no you have a man. <laughs> really exceptional. Well, you can just talk to all women in general instead of to that one woman and then it's already okay. So that's not a lot with women in general. Uh, you, for example, ask a question that only... Um, and the answer is only applicable to you. Then you need to be careful about those types of sentences if you're alone as a, as a woman, as a man. But if the answer is applicable to everyone, you can just talk to the whole room and then it doesn't matter. Matter. That's what that's 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 that depends maybe on which school of Vinaya you're following. Yeah. Yeah. But you can just, you know, you can forget about meditation. You can just the whole the whole of your life you're spending on Vinaya and also meditation and you know discuss about this for years and not uh, not get anywhere, you know, of course. <laughs> I have videos of like uh, 100 hours of uh, discussing the game. <laughs> <laughs> nice. yeah, and, and, I, and I thought when I was on it, I will start watching it sometime. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's still um, monks left in Sri Lanka, and I was inside myself. His teacher was one uh, of the few people left who memorized the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like they, they had everything they had. Or the whole thing that had. Or the whole thing that had. Or the whole thing that had. The whole Vinaya, there are quite a few more. Yeah. No, his teacher has uh, memorized yeah, yeah. the two thirds of the Tibetan. Th- 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 yeah, the Tibetan kind. I think he was able remembers at least five books as well. Which is his Venerable Sarana's teacher here in Burma. He's sort of in charge of Roman as well. Mm-hmm. He's 
one of the heads of Shuaiji in which he guides the Bao. Sorry. Uh, if you know which Nikaya is a Bawa. The Bawa. Which who? Which who? Uh, is is Sudama. Sudama. Yeah. yeah. That's very much how the nice region. Region is yeah. quite strict. Yeah. It's quite serious. <laughs> so the Sudama school that the Bawa is part of, what's the, what defines them? Uh, Sudama is like a bit middle, <laughs> not, not too strict. In yes. Street Jin is very strict. It's basically, right? I, I mean, never the, the, the legal questions about some, no, I don't know how to advise some rules. And then it's in the ordination of age. Who was your preceptor? Who made you the man? And you are. In the but Venerable Ottomosala is my preceptor, but Venerable Sadhana was teaching me the Vinaya. So my preceptor is Sudama, and my Vinaya teacher is Srijin. So that's kind of an Venerable Sarabhish. Sarabhish is the Vinaya, quite strict according to his own perceptions, not always according to the He's yeah. stricter than everything, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's better, but in yeah, to get the tea in the Sarangi Toya as a monk, you need to ask someone to pour it for you because you cannot eat up the tea. But once the tea is heated up, I can do the rest. So I do a little bit of water. And then I walk to my room and I do the rest. <laughs> <laughs> do you need to wake up one of the workers? <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Well, let's call it a section. Let's call it a section. Walking in the kitchen at five. We need a one hour break and deliver drinks from TV. So tonight's section in inside the hall. Next section. Next section. What time? Do we do a special meditation? Seven. 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 Seven.